Jeremy Weiss here. We're here with Joe Pelko. He knows a thing or two about starting and running successful companies. A little bit about Joe. In 1994, he co-founded an e-commerce pet supply retail company. You won't guess it. The ferretstore.com, which they later sold. Joe and his co-founder Scott then started Solid Cactus, which is grown, it grew to over 200 employees when it was sold to Web.com Group in 2009, which is a publicly traded company. Now, their company has been on the Inc. 500, Inc. 5000. It's been honored for best places to work in Pennsylvania for three years consecutively. Now, Joe now is the Chief Marketing Officer at 3D Cart. Joe, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Nice to be here. And a fun fact about Joe I always like to include is he is obsessed with ferrets, all animals, but especially chihuahuas. I love it. Very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, I wanted you to talk about, and we like to get top advice from founders. And we often you know, learn our most valuable lessons that allow us to grow and improve when we make mistakes or we have challenges that we have to overcome. And it's better to learn from someone else's pitfalls and roadblocks than our own. So we're lucky enough to have you as a guest because you've been through a lot and you've built successful companies. Um, so we want to learn from some of the big lessons you've learned. And the first question I wanted to ask is, what was a big roadblock or challenge you faced and how you overcame it? Whew. One of the biggest challenges I had was um, we Solid Cactus had become, at one point, the largest developer of Yahoo Stores on, on the Yahoo Stores platform. And it had started to become a challenge for Yahoo because a lot of other developers who wanted to rise up and actually program on their platform, the biggest complaint that Yahoo would receive is that, like, I can't compete with that solid cactus, it's too big, it takes my customers, you know, so one of the biggest challenges I had was when Yahoo had come to me and said, you know, over the next six months, we're going to have to start to wind down how we um, promote you on our network. Um, because it's becoming a barrier to getting other developers to program on our software. So that's at that point was when I realized I had to start to diversify the revenue. I couldn't have so much revenue and, and you know basically employees in my company based on revenue from design services. And I then went down the path of, okay, recurring monthly revenue is what we really need to focus on because, you know, just web design is too um, inconsistent, right? So we, we developed a, a call center. We had hired um, a call center manager, actually the guy who ran Bank of America's call center, wow. um, which was, I mean, Bank of America has a ton of call centers, but in Scranton, Pennsylvania, they had one, so we had hired him, and he helped us build our, our call center, which our call center was to offer our customers um, customer service. So the, the concept was as a small business would grow, uh, most small business owners work out of their houses and they work full-time jobs and you know let's just say they started to have success with their website they would need someone to answer their phone for them so we built that out that become a monthly recurring service um, as the small businesses would grow they would need uh, marketing services so we built a search marketing department we built a Google you know Google AdWords department search marketing um, SEO Facebook all those managed services. And then we'd also built out software that our customers would use to process their orders and to promote their products on search engines. So over the course of that year following that, our, our goal was to grow out our other forms of revenue so that we didn't have all of our eggs in one basket. And that was the awakening moment that, like, you know what, we have to diversify. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty amazing that you were able to build all those things out that quickly. Looking back on it, it's very incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I always look back at, at my past and I'm like, if I were to do it all over again, would I even be as successful as I was doing it? Um, probably because I have the experience, but it was so much work. A lot of times I look back and I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'd want to do that all over again. Which was the hardest out of those three when you were diversifying? Which was the hardest to get up and running? Well, they were all challenging. Um, 
the call center was pretty easy. On a technology side, it was hard, though, because it, it required a, a telecommunications infrastructure. So, you know, to do that right, we had to invest in Cisco equipment and build out a, a call center, which is not a cheap undertaking. No, I would so think I each would, one of those individually are would be difficult. They are. I, I think what what was for me that made it so possible was I had the right people doing it. Um, I didn't build them myself. I had hired people to do that for me. And I I think that one thing that I've learned over the course of being an entrepreneur is as the business gets larger, you have to learn to let go. Yeah. And you have to learn to trust the people that you've hired to do those things. And, you know, you still don't make it so that there's no accountability. There always has to be accountability. But you can't get involved in their decision-making process because then they all start to doubt what it is that they should do, right? So if they think you're going to have a specific reaction to something they're doing, they may not do it. And it may be something that they feel is, is very strongly that they want to do. Right. So, I, I, you know, I had good people build out those pieces of the company and... I put the right people in the right positions, and that's that's probably the best advice I could give to a, a entrepreneur is put the right people in the right positions. So after you hit one of those roadblocks, tell us about one of those mistakes that you made and how you handled it. Well, one of the the biggest mistakes um, I had made was when we started to have a decrease in in the store development revenue um, which store development was our you know non-recurring revenue piece so for us that would be an existing customer wants a website redesigned they pay us we design and program the website they pay it's all done right well we had been off on those sales and you know to put into perspective at one time we say we had 800 projects in the pipeline um, it had gone down to around 500 and I didn't lay people off. Actually, what we ended up doing was having phenomenal customer service, um, but we weren't making money. And it even became harder to lay the people off that I needed to lay off because um, the service was so good, right? So people, when we were making a lot of money, we were like, oh, we could never take care of our customers like this. Look what a good job we're doing taking care of our customers. But the reality was that I couldn't afford to take care of them. So I, I would say that the, the biggest mistake is not responding quickly enough to a change in the business. Yeah, that's tough to do, you know, because, you know, it's people you know and, you know, you're, they're probably friends too. Right, right. I mean, when you're growing up from um, one employee going up to 200 and then on the way back down when the economy changes, um you know a lot of your staff. I, I, I want to say that when, when you start going off into that um, mindset of like people running the different departments for you, well, there were people in my company I didn't know as I got larger. Right. But what's one of the big were some of the first employees, honestly. Oh. oh, wow. So it's hard. Yeah, very hard. What's one of the big lessons you've learned while running your business that you look back on? The best, I, I, there's a saying, hope is not a strategy. And that is the most important lesson I've learned. Hope is not a strategy. If there is something in your business that is drastically changing and you need to make a change, don't hope that it's going to get better. I mean, you can always pick up the pieces later. But, you know, in my case, that was I needed to get rid of some people. I had to eliminate some positions, and I didn't do it. And that was one of the biggest mistakes I had made. Um, and it applies for anything. I mean, if if you have somebody working in a position that's just not right in that position, you've given them multiple opportunities to be good in that position, and they're not, you're hurting your business if you leave them there. Yeah. And it's your business, too. And you have a responsibility to the people who work in your company and who work for you, right? And to put them in contact on a continual basis with somebody who's not doing their job properly is demoralizing for the whole team. Yeah, it's a tough tough thing to do on both ends. Um, now we talked about you know, some of the roadblocks, some of the, the lessons learned. What was one of those happy moments, those big milestones you're especially proud of that you were able to achieve because of this past experience that you have? 
Can you repeat that again? What was the big milestone that you were especially proud of that you were able to achieve because you've learned all these lessons? Um, as you get older, you just get wiser, right? And I think that the, the biggest milestone I had was when I, I came to 3D Cart. Um, the owner said to me, um, he's like, I knew you were available and I wanted you on my team. Um, but I really don't, you know, I'm, we're not that large yet, so I, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I just knew that if I didn't take you when you were available, that I would not have the opportunity to have you on my team. So what are you going to do for me? Like, you have to, you have to make me money. It's a big compliment. <laughs> right. So, um, what I did was I started a search marketing department. I mean, I had the experience from building it at Solid Cactus, and it, it ties right in perfectly to what 3D Cart does, right? 3D Cart's shopping cart software. Okay. And we basically have the same customer type that we had at Solid Cactus, right? So if somebody is going to buy my software, how do I keep them from not canceling my software, right? And that's to make them successful, right? So there are some things that I, I think a software company, a lot of software companies don't want to actually do services. Um, and in a lot of cases, I think that makes a lot of sense, right? But when it comes to things that can make your customers successful on your product, um, you have to do something about it. Whether you know whether you're doing it internally or you're outsourcing it, um, it's so hard to acquire a customer that I think I had read a statistic somewhere that it's like six times more expensive to acquire a new customer than it is to retain an existing one, right? So. That was my first advice: was let's build out a search marketing department, and um, we're we're at about you know sixty some employees, so it's starting oh, wow. to get that whole cactus feel. When I came here, we were less than thirty, wow. so it's growing like crazy, and it, it reminds me a lot of of um, cactus. And I think Gonzalo was a really smart guy for for bringing mm -hmm. me here because I've experienced all the things that he's going to experience right. that he doesn't realize. Right. Yet. I mean, he knew it. He knew it, and he, he, he told it. you, and he, yeah, he wanted to bring someone on, just like we're listening to your advice that, that uh, could, you know, has been there and done that, so. But I had to monetize me sooner, right? <laughs> now I, I do have more marketing functions, and we actually are growing fast as a company, and there's a lot of marketing to do. But when I first came here, it was still growing, you know, so yeah, uh, and we are still growing. Definitely, it's a it's a great um, it's a great company, and South Florida is a great place to have a company in a lot of ways, not just the weather. So, on that note, what's one of the best pieces of advice that you'd want to make sure a founder knows when they're maybe they're starting their company now, maybe they're just starting to get some traction in their early on? What should they know? Well, one thing. Don't make a habit of taking on business just for the sake of saying you have business or just for the sake of growing revenue because th there is a saying that, uh, you know, a dollar lost a million times is a million dollar loss and there's nothing further from the truth, right? So there will always come time in your business where as you establish your revenue and you establish your business, you have slow periods. Right, so to bring in a little extra volume to get you through slow periods, even if it's not at the margins you want it to be at, I would say is totally acceptable. Like, take for example, you know, in the web design business, um, November, December are probably two of the slowest months because no merchant is going to do major overhauls on their website in the middle of the busiest season. Right, so in those cases, um, you know, if somebody called in and say, "Oh, I need a bigger order button." Right, like that's typically something that uh, a task you wouldn't want to take yet, take on in February. You know, when you're really, really busy. But come November, you're happy to get that extra revenue. So, um, I, I would just say that the most important part is don't make a habit of something that's not normal. If you have, um, you know, historical numbers that show you that it's your slowest time, and you know it's a six-week period, well, that's a whole different story. You've got to bring some revenue in to get through those six weeks, but um, don't don't make a habit of doing business at a loss. Always focus on your margin. Yeah, that's good advice. We we definitely need to always remember that. And I have one final question for you, Joe. Before I ask it, I want you to tell us a little bit more about 3D Cart, what you're working on now, what's exciting there. Um, I think 3D Cart is 
an extremely exciting company, specifically because you know, if you go back in my history, I started retailing online back in 1994. So I have a lot of experience um, on different shopping cart platforms. And 3D Cart is one of the easiest platforms to open an online store on. Um, I, I really, really love it. And to me, that's really exciting. When you work for a company that has a really great piece of software, um, and you can see how easy it is to become successful on that piece of software, <laughs> that's exciting, right? There's nothing that's more um, frustrating than working somewhere where you don't see the big picture or you're not on board with the overall goal, right? Yeah. And um, I, I really do believe that we own a piece of software here at 3D Cart that is just um, phenomenal in comparison to what's on the market for what, you know, dollar for dollar what you get. It's very exciting to me. So, um, what's you know what what I am working on is really evangelizing the software and trying to make sure that the merchants who choose this software can be successful with their businesses. And you know, not everybody can be successful. I, I know that a lot of people will come to any shopping cart or any e-commerce platform with a bad idea, and they'll try it anyway, right? But I want to make sure that everybody who can be successful will be successful. Yeah. So what was it like? Tell us what was it like for, for everyone who didn't have the shopping cart experience in 1994. What was that like compared to now? Oh, that that's a great story. I mean, um, starting to sell online in 1994 prior to Amazon was basically a mistake. I didn't know that was going to turn into a real business. I What Scott and I had thought at that time was like we were going to be in college and this was a great way to make a little extra money. And um, it blew up so fast because there was there weren't that many people selling online. And what was really fun back then was being the first one of the first companies to sell online. You, you know, nowadays one of the biggest problems a business have is has a search engine optimization and getting your business found. But back at a time when the internet was so small that not, not that many people had it, um, you know. I can remember Alta Vista being like the the number one search engine of its time, right? And I can remember getting a complaint from a customer that said, "Whenever I search the word ferret, all I get is your website." Right? That's and a I good good comment that. to get, right? You would search the word ferret, and we were results one through nine. Wow! Right? And, and because there was nothing else. Um, so I think that the most fun part about e-commerce back then was it was just so much easier. I love it. You know, it is hard today. Like people who are successful in e-commerce today, basically fall into one of two paths. Right? You either have a really niche product idea that is really cool, and people just have to have it, or you've found a way to sell commodities at a price lower than anybody else can. And we know that that's not a fun path to take. Right? If you could be the lowest cost provider of a commodity. It's not a fun business. You're completely volume based. You're really just an online supermarket. Right. But if you have a real niche product that people just love, and people want to have it and share it with their friends and all that, like, um, and that's you know that's how social media is really starting to play into e-commerce. You'll ask people about, um, you know, like, oh, do you think social media is important? And a lot of store owners will be like, I don't know. I think it's important, but I can never tell if any sales come from it. Specific sales don't come from it, but people who are interested in your product and interested in what you do come from it. Yeah. So it's not an immediate purchase. You know, somebody doesn't find you on Facebook and buy something, but someone may find your company on Facebook and follow you for six months and purchase because they're aware of your business. Right. So. Yeah. No, I love that. That's a great story. <laughs> um, the last question I have for you, Joe, is the the best advice you've gotten from a mentor for your business that was most valuable to you? Um, I, I, I'm smiling because um, it was kind of an internal joke. It ha happened prior, or you know, post the Web.com acquisition, and I got to work with a, a really smart man at Web.com named Greg Wong, and um, I, I learned a lot from Greg. Greg was one of the most interesting people, and he'd always say we have to do the right thing, <laughs> right, and to the point of like. It would almost kind of be a joke, like you knew when we would be in some kind of a meeting that do the right thing was going to come out of his mouth somewhere in the <laughs> in the meeting. Um, 
and I, hopefully if he ever hears this, he'll just smile and, and know that I'm saying it in good fun, but the, it is one of the most valuable pieces of advice. Do the right thing. Whatever the right thing is for whomever, you know, I mean, there's, I may have a different right thing than what you have, but you really want to think it through and you want to do the right thing because the reality is when you build a business around something that's not ethical or is not the right thing, it will come to bite you in the end. So really do, do the right thing and you'll never have to worry about somewhere down the road like being sued or paying you know, for a cleanup or, or doing something that you shouldn't have to do. If you just do the right thing from the beginning, yeah, you won't have any problems. That's great. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge with us, spending the time. You know, um, what's the website name so people can check it out and say thank you to you? What's the uh, the the website? Is it just 3dcart.com or? Well, sure. 3dcart.com is is the shopping cart software I work at. I I maintain sort of maintain my own blog at my um my name josephpalco.com. Uh, I have to say that one thing about me is that people will say I have no filter. So just remember that I'm a good guy who knows a lot about <laughs> business who will do the right thing, but I may say things that that, that you find personally offensive. So uh, <laughs> with that disclaimer, we will link up uh, we'll link up the website and your website too so people and, can and check it out. And my co partner from the past, Scott Sanfilippo, scottsanfilippo.com. He's a really good blogger and actually writes really good articles on a daily basis. He, he's someone you want to follow. I'm somebody who probably will irritate you. Um, but, you know, don't worry, I'm really trying to do the right thing. Sounds good. Thanks, I Joe. I just don't live my life for anybody but myself. I appreciate you know? it. So Thanks for sharing with us. It's really great being with you.